What's up guys? I want to do another quick video here today. This one is on roommates. Why you should or should not have a roommate. This one is why you should not. So, as you know, I moved in here in August uh, the 5th of 2017 in this apartment. And the guy I've been uh, rooming with is fucking nuts. I mean, he is freaking crazy. This, this guy, I swear to God, has no freaking brains at all. Um, so where to start? First of all, I'm going to show you the living room. This is where he lives. He lives in the living room. He sleeps in the living room, on the floor, on the couch, sometimes in a chair. He's up all freaking hours of the night. He goes to bed at 6 o'clock. Well, I say 6.20 when I'm up and getting ready to go to work. Um... And he fucking annoys me. He works down the road here from us at, the, at uh, Kmart. And he comes home 10.30, 10.45 at night. And right when I'm, because I, I go to bed at 10 o'clock, I get up at 6. So I try to get as much sleep as I can. And he bitches and complains, well, you, you must be an old man. You going to bed so fucking early. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. But he really freaking annoys the shit out of me. So, I want to show you just how. He lives. This is the living room. This is his bedroom. And whatever else he does in here, I don't know. But I'm going to show you. So, here we go. These are his nasty freaking slippers. Flip-flop socks and his socks. Laying in the middle of the floor. These things look like they were made 50 years ago and he still wears them. And of course, all his junk up here. He keeps complaining about me being dirty and not organized and uh, uh, neat and stuff. Look at this. All of this. Receipts, CDs, money, batteries. Stuff that needs to be thrown away. Stuff that isn't any good anymore. All of this crap. And then we'll have his clothes piled up right here. All of his clothes on this little table piled up. He used to have an ottoman right here, but he threw it away. Don't know why. This is his bed for some, the most part. He sleeps in here. That's a big old couch. His pillows right there. And he also sleeps right here. And to beat all, in this little spot, let me give you a, a good look at this, li this living room here. This living room is like 40 feet long. From back here to back here. It's about 40 feet and about 20, 15 to 20 feet wide. And he sleeps right there in the floor. Right in this whole area. You can, you can see right there on the spot. But he sleeps there on the floor. And he's fucking naked all the time in the floor. And I get up and I see his ass hanging out. And it's freaking disgusting. I don't know why he does this. He has a freaking bedroom that he can sleep in right back here. There's the bathroom, of course. I think I've showed you guys the bathroom. But he has a bedroom. He can get a bed. And he can sleep in here. In his room. Why the fuck does he sleep in the living room? No, mind you, this one's smaller than the one that I'm, I'm staying in right now. But I like this one better because it's, it's, it's got a door and I can close it. This room here is mine. Oh, there she is. There's Sammy. I told you guys I'd get her on tape. Say hi, Sammy. Say hi. Yeah, I couldn't bring her with me at first because he said that uh, not all dogs are probably as house trained as we say they are, but she's been a good girl. She only had a couple of accidents in here, but it was because he gave her food to eat. There's my baby. She'll be six years old in April. And you can see all the gray in her beard. Yeah, you can sniff it. Stick your nose up there. But yeah, this is my room. I, I got a door right there. And then this goes into the living room like I just went in there and this opens up into the kitchen I use this door to go in and out because I don't want to deal with him I don't want to have to talk to him at all but yeah but it's, it really pisses me off how nasty he is and he'll come in here I kid you not he'll come in here I'll be laying here on the bed right about where she is and she'll be here at the, at the foot of my bed on, or on his head. He'll come in here. He'll lay down on the bed with me on here. Just so he can play with her. Now, 
the whole thing was a dog thing. I don't care. But you ain't gonna come in here on my bed when I'm in here trying to watch TV or rest or whatever and mess with the dog. And another thing he'll do is when she's down here under the bed, because she she hides under the bed a lot. Down here, under here. Because she's afraid of loud noises, thunder, lightning, wind, rain, farts. You breathe and she goes to, to run and hide. Um, she was like, yeah, she started this a year and a half. After she turned a year and a half old, she was afraid of everything. So, she hides under there anytime there's a loud noise. See, she's looking now, see, figure out what that sound is. And there she goes. She well maybe. She might not go under there. Yeah, she's going. Okay, might as well go. Go on. Go on. Uh, whatever. You can stay there if you want. But anyway. Um the landlord the landlord doesn't want us leaving the doors unlocked at night. Two months ago, he lost his house keys for the front door and for our door because there's two separate keys that's needed, for one for the front and one for our door. He lost them two months ago. So the landlord locks the door at night because he doesn't want anybody coming in here. And this is the west side. This is the worst part of Charleston that there is. He doesn't want people coming in here at night, so he locks the doors. He will come home 10, 30, 10, 45, wake me up, banging on this window right here as hard as he can or banging on that door as hard as he can and I don't even fucking get up. I just lay there in bed and I just play like I'm asleep. He's had two months. Two fucking months to get a key made. And he has not done it. Is this recording? Yes, it's recording. Okay. But like I said, he's had two months to make a key. He hasn't done it. So the landlord went down yesterday. Spent eight bucks to get two keys made. And gave them to him. So now I don't have to worry about that. But then he loses his wallet. Three weeks ago. Or four weeks ago. Maybe a month ago. I don't remember. It's so much stuff has happened. He loses that. And then he starts accusing me of, of being um, being bad luck and all this stuff. Because he, he loses his keys. Uh, I told you about his TV. He had, he had an Ori, Orico. O-R-I-K-O. K-K-O or something. A little 19 inch TV like this one here. He had in here. And... Um, I started fucking, fucking with him with it. Because I found out that my TV remote for my Vizio TV, which is in here, works with this one. Or not this one, but the old one. The, the or, Orico. Or, 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 Orinco or whatever. It's a really cheap, off-brand Japanese thing. But this Vizio TV remote that I have for this TV would turn his TV on and off. So I stood here at the door at night and just get up in there. I did this for like three or four weeks. Turning his TV on and off, changing channels, uh, muting it, uh, volume up and down. And finally, one night, he got mad, and he took the TV and smashed it in the floor. And, of course, he busted the screen on it. So he had to go get another TV. This one here. Element. Another generic piece of shit TV. Little 19 inch. And, of course, he got this vacuum here that doesn't even have a brush or a belt on it anymore. It's all busted up. But he went and got that TV and then he kept saying that the remote wouldn't work a few nights ago. Um, I guess I'm bad luck for that too because his remote quit working. It's still under warranty. Uh, you can take it back to Walmart for 90 days to exchange it. Uh, whether he does it or not, I don't know. But he has a, uh, a universal remote he can use for it that he bought unless he took it back. Uh -oh. Who knows? But, all that aside, I don't care. I'm at a point in life where I just hope he just walks out the door and doesn't come back. Um, the rent here is $900, of course, like I've said before. We split it in half between the two of us. The landlord pays the utilities. And I myself could probably do the $900, but I wouldn't have any money left over for anything else. Which would be fine with me if I had peace and quiet here and him not here. For him to be completely gone and never come back would make me the happiest motherfucker in the world. <sighs> so you might hear the piano upstairs. That's him, the landlord, playing the piano. He goes to church and everything on the weekends. Uh, he is up here by himself, I guess. I haven't seen anyone come in and out of there since I've been here. But 
Number two, two things I want to tell you in the kitchen. When I first moved in here, let me, let me get these lights turned off in here. Oh, this is so much fun. Okay. So, let me see. Of course, here's our, here's our door right here. And then that front door there, you have to have a separate key for that door and this one. And then down there is the basement for the washer and dryer. So, anyway, I went when I moved in here, it was probably September. I went and got pots and pans. Two of these, which is right here, this little piece of pan, and then this one right here, the cookie sheet. And of course, I went and got a microwave. And I went and got some pots because he only had those two right there. Those two red ones which are all scratched up. But these are these are tea fowls. I went and got these at Walmart and I brought them down here. But that's all we had was those two pots to cook in. And he eats chicken, pork chops, macaroni and cheese, um, Salisbury steak, stuff like that. All the time. That's all he ever eats. When he makes chicken, he puts it on these pans, I guess, and then he bakes it. When he bakes it, he bakes it for almost an hour, which he only supposed to bake chicken 20 to 25 minutes. He burns every freaking thing he cooks. Don't know why, and I'm not going to say anything about it. But I'm not buying any more pans. I'm not buying anything else for this house. If I buy anything, it's going to be after I move out of here. This pan was sitting here almost four days with water sitting in it because he had chicken he baked in it. It took me a freaking 20 minutes to scrub all that out of there and even then there's still some black in it I can't get out. This is I baked some um, biscuits earlier on this when I washed it. But you can't get all that freaking burnt meat off the pans. There's just no way. And this was for pizza. This was actually more of a a gray color and it's completely black now this is only supposed to be used for pizzas and stuff like that and he bakes meat on it and he's freaking destroyed that pan and this well this one's not really destroyed it's just resting up he puts it here and needs water in it and then this is my little George Foreman I brought with me but I don't understand I don't get why he does the things he does I really don't uh, and he walks around with a freaking noxzema on his face all the time. That shit stinks to high hell. And which I can, he got, he has something else in there right now. It was noxzema at first, and then he bought another off brand. Everything he buys is also, you know, either like the chicken and stuff is on sale, um, going to expire in two days. He brings it home. He might eat it before it expires. Usually it ends up turning sour, and he throws it in the trash, and it sits here for two days. With that smell in the air, and it's, it's completely disgusting. So this is what it looks like now. This is a markdown one. This one here was marked down from three dollars to two eleven. It's about getting ready to expire, and he leaves all this stuff sitting in here. All this, some of this stuff has been in here since I moved in here, and I haven't touched it. This is not really my job to do so. Another thing in here is mine is this right here and the coffee creamer. The rest of this stuff is his except for that bag of sugar down there. And the sugar is in the refrigerator because we have ants comes in in here on the counter. You can see his little things right there. These are supposed to be for ants. They don't work. But yeah. And he'll leave stuff like this around. See this is this is what he buys. He buys junk food. Cookies. There's two bags. Well there was two bags of cookies. They're both empty now. He'll buy junk food and leave all that sitting here. Bags and bags of cookies and ice cream and candy and, ch and candy bars. And the motherfucker's $900 behind in rent. You know, I don't understand how you can put this junk food shit before your rent. I'm, I'm tired of him and the landlord's tired of him. We're both wanting to find someone else to come in here to be a roommate with me so we can kick him out because he is nothing but fucking trouble 
he came in, what was it, the night before last. Um, like I said, we don't leave the doors unlocked. He lost his keys. He should, he'd had, he's had two months to go get keys. Um, yeah, he came in here two nights ago, Thursday night. And he slammed every fucking door in this apartment. Every freaking door. He was cussing, carrying on, saying, Who the fuck goes to sleep at 9 o'clock at night? And you know when I'm tired, I go to bed whenever. I don't care what time it is. If it's 8 o'clock or 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock, I fucking lay down and I go to sleep. You're not going to tell me when I can go to sleep and when I can't. You know, I'm 40 years old. I can do whatever I want to. But he came in here. He started slamming doors to say, Motherfuckers, there ain't nobody going to come in here. They don't need to leave the fucking door locked all the time. Which is what they've always done. Before he lost his keys, the doors were always locked all the time. I mean, it's just a common sense thing. You don't want people coming in your house. Especially when you're renting it and you don't even own the place. Um, but yeah, he came in here throwing a fit. You know, um, I don't know if any of you know him. His name is Elliot Brown. He works at the Kmart at Patrick Street here in Charleston. Um, I just really don't, I don't have anything good to say about him at all. At all. You know. I don't know. Every time he keeps, he, every time something goes wrong, it's always your bad luck or you jinxed me or you did this to me or you did that to me. It sounds just like my fucking ex saying everything that ever happened has been wrong in our relationship. Talk about, talk about my ex now. It was my fault. He never took responsibility for anything. It's always my fault. You did this. You did that. I didn't have anything to do with it. I mean, come the fuck on, people. This gets old really quick. So, if you're in a situation where you have to have a roommate, go for it. I'm all for you. If you want to do that, if you don't have any other choice but to have someone help you pay your rent and your bills to stay with you, then do it. But if you can get a place on your own that will, you know, that you'll be able to pay the bills and everything by yourself, you're better off just to do that. Don't go get a roommate if you don't have to. Uh, really the only reason I'm here is because of the dog every place I've looked at they either charge you a ridiculous rental fee a month to have a dog or they won't let you have one at all they'll let you have cats and, and fish and reptiles and stuff in a cage but no dog so that's the only reason I'm still here I haven't found a place that will actually let me have a dog yet so I mean, that's it. That's all I got to say about it. You know, the more I think about the shit he does and the things he says, the more pissed off I get. He will even, he used to even leave the door on the side of the house that goes towards the basement. He'd leave that door unlocked if the front door was locked, so he'd come in the side door. Bro, just go get a fucking key. You get paid every two weeks like everybody else does. Get a fucking key to the door. Good freaking God. Well... Hopefully this will give you guys some insight of what it's like to have a roommate. I don't recommend you do it, but if you do, need to do as much research on the person as you can. Talk to neighbors, see if they know anything about the person. Make sure you know who you're living with before you move. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'm going to leave my email address down there too in case you guys want to contact me. As I said, you know, I've got to get out of here. I don't know where to, where I'm going to go, but I've got to. Tax time is coming up here in a couple months, so we'll have a refund back. And that will be moving money, hopefully. So, uh, I'll keep you guys updated on what goes on here. See you later, folks.